So a couple days ago on the Car Problems Instagram, I posted a short video of me playing on my driving simulator setup, and to my surprise, there was actually a lot of interest from you guys regarding what I was doing and the setup in general. I got quite a few messages to make a video on this topic for the YouTube channel. So, since I'm stuck at home and I can't go around driving real cars, I figured I would make a video about driving digital ones. So without wasting anybody's time, here is my driving simulator setup, and right off the bat, I want to apologize for the lighting in what is legitimately just the corner of my basement. I never really intended on recording videos here and the basement as a whole is very disorganized. It's kind of in a state of disaster. I'm in the process of trying to build a home gym as well. So that's a completely different story. But let me run you through exactly what I have going on here. Of course it needs an update. Now you're gonna have to pardon my ignorance in regards to the technical details as well as some of the names for the items that make up this driving simulator because while I did the information when I first bought it, which I would highly recommend doing your research, I have not since retained most of that information, but I'll do my best to explain it and I'll put official names of things on screen if you're interested in looking it up yourself. So we'll start with the rig, which is basically the frame for your driving simulator setup. And I can tell you from experience having bought some far less expensive rigs in the past, they're not worth it because they have a lot of flex, they're just simply not strong enough and over time they break. A solid rig like this, which is called insert name here because I quite frankly don't remember, this is very modular, meaning that you can pretty much set it up however you want, tons of adjustability and it is rock solid, which you need depending on how strong of a motor I guess you would call this a motor that you buy for your wheel because if you have a really strong motor but a weak rig, it's gonna flex, it's gonna move around a lot and it's just not gonna make for a very good driving experience. So spend a little bit more money on the rig. I think that's more important than a lot of people realize. Obviously you have to get a chair as well. Sometimes they come with a chair, this particular setup did not. And I wanted something a little bit nicer anyway. So this is a Sparco racing chair. Uh, red in color, which I think looks pretty cool. It's actually remarkably comfortable. It doesn't make you sweat too much. You can definitely buy a more expensive chair than this. This is kind of on the lower end of Sparco chairs, but it does the job. And again, I just think it looks quite cool. And then let's get to this where, you know what? I should probably turn this on. This is pretty cool. Watch when you turn it on, how it, it lights up and then it just kind of spins around. I don't know, I just think that's cool. It also gives you this warning message every time you start it up that this is actually kind of dangerous and you should be careful while using it and even read the manual. So the wheelbase, which is basically the motor and the wheel that I have is from a company called Fanatec or Fanatic. I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to say it. This specific one is the Podium Wheelbase DD1 PS4 where this wheel and the base actually came as a combo, which is not typical for this particular brand, but this was something new and they launched it specifically for the PS4. I believe because Fanatec is the supplier for all of the sim gear for the F1 eSports grid, but I could be wrong on that. Basically, this wheel base you can use with a PS4, you can use with an Xbox, and you can also use with PC, of course. It's just the wheel. You would have to buy an Xbox or PC specific one to use it with something else. This wheel will only work with a PS4, so it's kind of just plug and play in that regard. This is also a direct drive motor, which I don't really know too much of the technical side of things, but a direct drive motor is typically gonna be more expensive and offer much stronger force feedback than cheaper wheelbases, which are gonna be belt driven. So this is supposed to be more accurate. It's supposed to be more one-to-one -one, and it's certainly more expensive. But honestly, having had some belt driven motors before, this is actually well worth it. It makes a really big difference. It feels quite good. And then the quality of the wheel and honestly, all the stuff from Fanatec, if you get into a lot of the higher end sim racing gear, the quality is better than what you'll find in most cars. It's really well made, it feels fantastic, and gives you a really realistic driving experience for the most part. As for the pedals, they're also from Fanatec. This is the more expensive option that they offer. I'll leave the official name on screen, uh, but this one is a little bit more expensive because of the top mounted clutch and brake pedal. Uh, with all kind of fully adjustable settings there on the back that you can mess around with. Pretty realistic and it does also offer force feedback on the brake, which is pretty cool. 
As for the TV, something I also know very little about. Basically when I was buying all of this stuff and putting it together, I went to Best Buy and I just bought the cheapest curved TV that they had in the size that I wanted. I want to say this is 50 something inches, I don't remember 100% by Samsung for those that care. It is also slightly curved which I wanted to have because I feel like it just gives you a slightly more immersive perspective when you're sitting in the driver's seat directly in front of it. And then the TV itself has to be mounted in the correct position. So you can see that this is actually on a stand that is by the same company as the rig itself. But it's really nice because it's made to work directly with this rig. You can see it fits perfectly around it. And it even has this little mount on the underside to mount a sound bar, which is what I wanted to do. Because quite honestly, I hate playing video games and just wearing headphones in general. So I have this sound bar. It projects the sound directly at you. It does have a subwoofer as well. At least that's what I think that is. And like I mentioned, this particular setup as it is right now works specifically with the PS4, which is what this is all hooked up to behind this complete mess of wires that, as you can see, I have not organized properly. Now, one question that I've been getting a lot since I started this channel, and I've touched on it in like one or two videos, but it's easy to have missed, is whether or not I track any of my cars. And the answer to that question is yes. I've actually done a fair amount of track time in a couple cars that I've owned over the years. Recently, I haven't been on a track as much as I would have liked to, uh, just because I've been super, super busy. Um, and when I say track day, just kind of open lapping stuff. I'm not actually racing any cars or anything like that. I like going around a track, trying to improve driving skill, and trying to go as quickly as possible without dying, basically. So given the fact that I haven't had as much time to go to the track as I would have liked to, and this year, I'm trying to prioritize that more. Obviously the current global situation is not ideal, but as soon as tracks do open up again and I'm available to go to track days, I'm definitely gonna to try to make that happen for you and there will be track content on the channel. So look forward to that. Either way, because I haven't historically had as much time as I would have liked to, I figured it was a worthwhile investment to invest in some driving simulator equipment, not necessarily to get the same experience because it's definitely not the same thing, but I definitely think that you can work on driving skills skills that are more track focused versus what you would realistically be able to do on the road in a real car. And it's funny because a driving simulator was really never on my radar. I kind of just thought that they were all kind of a little bit garbage, but I had the opportunity to play on somebody else's very expensive setup and it blew my mind in terms of what kind of a simulated driving experience you could have in your own house for X amount of money. And the simulator setup that I'm talking about was like, thirty forty thousand dollars it was ridiculously expensive it even had like the motion seat super cool but also crazy expensive this seat does not move around for those that are wondering but when i tried that i decided i wanted to invest in my own simulator and like a lot of people, I kind of just cheaped out. I spent, I actually went on Kijiji, believe it or not, and I bought someone else's used setup for like $600. Retail value would have been about two grand if I bought all of the stuff new, but it was relatively inexpensive at the time and it was all put together. And again, I just, I didn't know much about it, so I bought it and honestly it was a decent setup, but after trying that out and realizing how much better the simulator experience could be, I figured it was worth the money for me to uh, spend on some nicer gear. And that would be my biggest piece of advice if you plan on building your own simulator. It's great to buy cheap stuff and it'll probably give you that kind of instant satisfaction. But trust me when I say that the higher end, more expensive stuff really does make for a much better overall experience. And if the goal of your simulator driving is to actually improve driving skill, I definitely think that the higher end stuff is worth the money. So without talking too much, I'm gonna leave you guys with some footage of me actually playing in the simulator that I recorded on the PS4. So I'm not sure how the quality is going to be. Hopefully it's okay. If you guys do wanna see more gameplay footage or more simulator footage, in general for me on the channel, which a lot of you guys suggested on Instagram. That's definitely a possibility if enough of you guys wanna see it, but please point me in the right direction. In this video, I am playing Gran Turismo using an AMG GT3 2016 race car of some sort. I just started playing this basically like a couple days ago. I know it sounds crazy to say, but I've had this in my house and I have not touched it for basically the last three months until a week ago. So if this is something that you guys would like to see more of, again, point me in the right direction. Let me know specifically what you guys wanna see. And I'll definitely try to make that happen, especially while we are all stuck at home. It's something I enjoy doing. And also please keep in mind guys, this is something I do for a hobby. I'm not a professional race car driver, so uh, 
enjoy the content. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like, subscribe for more car videos, and I'll leave you to me driving a fake race car.